Hello and welcome to this introductory series on Blender. In this series we'll be looking at all the parts of Blender that you'll need to get started and get into using the program. In this first episode we'll be looking at downloading Blender from the Blender website and then we'll take a quick overview of the startup screen including the splash screen and the different links and functions that you can access from there and then we'll get into setting up Blender ready for use so without further ado let's move on okay so the first thing we want to do is go straight to the Blender website and download Blender we do that by typing Blender org into the search bar and up it comes uh, this is the blender website and you can browse that at your leisure but for now the important part is this download button right over here and we just click that and it takes us to the download page where we can choose the version that for our operating system We've got the choice of obviously uh, Mac OS X 64 bits and 32 bits, Linux again 64 and 32 bit systems, and the same for your Windows. I'm using a 64 bit Windows 7, so I simply click on the installer link, and that does its thing. It says download is in progress and there it goes, apparently I've got three minutes to wait so we'll just pause uh, okay that's finished let's uh, stop that now uh, once it's finished downloading you just follow the instructions or the protocols for your system for installing um, with Windows I can just press the downloaded X button and that will bring us to the system and it wants just click the buttons to tell it what to do uh, yep click next uh, agreement we all just know what that means and then we go through the next uh, you can decide where you want it to go or just let it do its own thing and we'll install that this won't take very long or it might even take long so I will pause again okay as soon as it finishes um, you get the screen and the checkbox to run blender is automatically checked so if we click finish we get the python information window and oh, pops blender slowly it's not normally this slow it's because I'm recording there we go um, what we're presented with is blender's splash screen and I'll just run through this quickly um, it tells you the version that we're using which is currently 2.68a revision 583 oops no I can't read revision 58537 uh, in the left hand side of the uh, splash screen we have a series of links that direct us to the manual the blender website where we've just downloaded from uh, the user community where you can find additional tutorials from different users around the world and the API reference if you're into programming and understanding the guts of Blender it's not something I know much about so I generally leave that alone on the right hand side you have an interaction button which tells you how you can run Blender, you can use the 3ds Max um, presets or the Maya presets if you're familiar with those programs but for the for these tutorials we'll be sticking to Blender just 
just beneath that is a list of your recent projects and your recovery button in case you had a crash or something that meant Blender shut down without saving. Um, okay, so let's let's move on to the next bit, and to do that we'll just fill the screen with Blender and click anywhere on the screen to get rid of the splash. The first thing we need to do before we get into what Blender is showing us is to set up some preferences and we do that by heading to the information bar at the top and under file if we just scroll down to user preferences and bring up this panel here. I'll just pull it into the middle. Uh, by default it shows the add-ons that are available and engaged or disengaged. We don't need that just yet. Have a look at the editing uh, page first, and for the main thing we want to look at is the global undo. At the currently, it's set to 32 steps, which for most projects is fine, but if you want, you can up that to give you a greater range of um, going back on yourself to re recover from earlier mistakes. Uh, the memory limit it means how many how much memory you can use for your undos uh, I'll just leave that on zero by default uh, inputs the main one we want to look at again we have the presets this is just the keyboard shortcuts and we're going to stick to just presets uh, the mouse, emulate three button mouse, that enables you to use um, a, t a tablet that doesn't have a middle mouse function. Um, the selection for objects by default is your right mouse button, which is slightly unusual, but something you'll get used to very quickly. But if you do have trouble with that, you can always switch it to left mouse select but that does uh, change things around that might cause confusion during the tutorials. Um, if you're using a laptop you can just tick the emulate number pad checkbox and what that will do is allow you to use the main one two three buttons on the top of your keyboard but you would primarily use that with uh, laptops or keyboards that don't have a number pad. Um, I've got a number pad so I don't need to have that checked. Uh, orbit style, we'll just keep that as default and dolly, we'll keep that as def default just so that it's easier to see during the tutorials. You can always change that when you're more familiar with the program. Uh, themes, just a little thing on themes, you can change the colouring and things on the uh, anything that you see you can change the colour of to make it more for you. And there is a list of presets that you can choose um, just for example if we choose hexagon it all goes blue and is Gross, so we'll change that back. Oh no, actually, that's gone weird. Oh, I've forgotten what the default is. 2.4. No, that's the. Oh crap. Elysian. No. Ah, well, we've cocked up the default, so. <laughs> That's just to show you that you can change the colouring on Blender. Um, ah, down at the bottom, reset to default theme, and that just and that's how you will see Blender normally, happily. It's <laughs> what I'm used to. It's what I. It's what I'm familiar with. So I'll keep it as that. Uh, on the system for files, the memory limits for video sequences. You can change that by default. It's set to one gigab one megabyte, 
one gigabyte and 1024 I've upped it to two just for because I I, I don't usually use uh, image files that are larger than uh, not image files video files that are larger than that so it's good enough for me for as a default if I need more I can always increase that uh, the important thing is the compute device if you're using a CUDA enabled graphics card in your system you would click this here and enable that I'm not I'm using an ATI card which doesn't support CUDA so I'm kinda of stuck with that um, that's about it for these I'll go into these windows in more detail at another time but for now that's uh, the basics just one other thing in the file menu um, is it the file menu? where the hell is it? and that's ah. where we'll leave it for this episode it's not in the file menu it's in the interface menu right at the beginning what we should have showed you originally um, on the interface menu the button you want to click is the prompt quit because by default this is set as off and if you close blender down it won't warn you that you haven't saved and you can lose a lot of work doing that so if you have that checked click save user settings and everything every time you quit blender if you haven't saved recently it's, it's, it will give you a little pop up just to tell you in our next video we will take a look at blender's default workspace and we will have a look at the different windows that make up our work area um, in the meantime don't forget to subscribe and you can also get in touch with us uh, ask questions in the comments below or you can get in touch on Google Plus, Twitter or Facebook um, and we'll see you in the next video okay thank you goodbye